that's not bad for a Sunday. Not bad for a Sunday afternoon, one minute late. And this is part two. This is a continuation from yesterday's broadcast. And hopefully we will have good audio this time. We will see what we shall see. Sounds good. Sounds good. And Stig is in the house. And he's only with, uh, oops, with four others. With four others. So hopefully the notification will go out and some folks will start popping in. I just scheduled this event not too long ago. Now, maybe about an hour or so ago. I scheduled the event for part two, continuation from yesterday's show. And Stig says, good evening, Craig and everybody. And let's see, uh, Carlos is in the house, and he says hello. So he's uh, probably relaxing by the pool. And he promised us one of these days soon he was going to have the date date on. So we'll see if that, uh, if that comes to pass. So ET's in the house. <clears throat> Do another quick time check. We're about uh, two minutes after the hour, officially two minutes after the hour. Moving along, Triforce Rich is in the house. I'll be busy today, but I'll try to listen here and there. Triforce Rich is, is uh, making things happen, and he's wishing a happy Father's Day to Carlos. Absolutely. <clears throat> Arnold is in the house, <clears throat> and uh, he says, hello, stinky pants, whoever that is. And let's see... Uh, Carlos is saying thank you. So they're going back and forth, and some folks are coming in. Let me re relaunch this. Relaunch this, make sure we're up to speed. Okay, yep, I'm up to speed. Okay, so we're going to have a quick little discussion. <clears throat> I had a, a contact uh, based on yesterday's show about the... Uh, the high-end shoes, dress, dress, and dress casual shoes. And uh, he asked me a hypothetical question, <clears throat> fun question. I have this question before. Okay, so if the place is on fire, what, what one pair of shoes would you grab and and go with? That's a very good question. A very good question. So I'm going to give you guys some nominees. Some nominees. And then, and then get your pick for what I should grab and go with. And let me see if I can pull up the um, the set here. I'm gonna pull up. Actually, what I want to do is I want to do. Uh, I got to do shoes. Just give me a second here. Da, 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 da. Okay, let me see here what I can do. View all 124. Okay. Okay. All right. So, okay. So, first thing uh, first things first. Let's go into my photo stream here. And we're going to talk about <clears throat> we're going to talk about my nominees, my nominees, okay? And <clears throat> and then I'm going to get your uh, impression or your pick of which of these nominees, which of these nominees I should grab and go with. Why is this photo not loading in properly? Reload this. There we go. That time it loaded in. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> nominee number one is a very rare pair. These are Timberlands. These date from about 1978-79-ish, right around the beginning of Timberland. And these are very rare. These are Norwegian. And let me get the pronunciation. I think it's pronounced Kempf leather, but... I'll show you the spelling here. <clears throat> K R Y M P leather. Okay. These are these are these were $140 new in like 1979, 78, 79 when I bought them they were 140 bucks. 
not discounted, folks. You couldn't get these things discounted. They were high-end Timberlands back in the day. And uh, here they are. Uh, here they are in real life. Still in fantastic condition. This leather is naturally waterproof. That particular type of leather that I just mentioned. And this is a stitched sole all the way around. You can see that. This has been the bottom. The vibrant soles have been resold like three times since I've had them. I used to wear these a lot. I don't wear them that much anymore. Should wear them some. They're, they're super comfortable. Okay, so that's a nominee just because they are extremely rare. Extremely rare and a little bit nostalgic. So that's a, that's a nominee. The very rare Timberlands. All right. Another nominee, let's do a time check while I grab this other nominee. <clears throat> Another nominee are, of course, the Russells, the Russell Moccasin Company. These are the Art Carver, I think they call them. Uh, these are custom only, custom order only, and these are super comfortable and just uh just an amazing piece of kit they and they by the way they come in different colors you can get them in black also but so that's a nominee because these would be it would take a while to get another pair because they were custom made so that's a nominee <clears throat> another nominee has to be the limer or limer however you pronounce them i just cleaned these up today because i just went on a hike with them today and I cleaned them up with some saddle soap. See how those, that stitching's all nice and clean? That's what saddle soap would do for you. I cleaned them up and I treated them with, with Bic number four. And these are, after a long break-in period, are extremely comfortable. <clears throat> and these are Limer Customs. These, these were the custom-made ones, which I don't know if they offer them anymore. They might. They don't mention it on their website. They used to offer these only, and then they got such a backlog that they started selling some off the shelf, ready to wear, for significantly less money. These were $650 last time I checked to be ordered, and it was at least a six month backlog to get them. So the limers or limers have to be nominated, have to be nominated as a potential. <clears throat> then let's see here uh, of course of course the the Edward Greens the Edward Greens that I wore yesterday and there's another shot of those the Edward Greens they are definitely in the running let me let me grab them real quick <clears throat> colors on that photo are just not quite accurate. Maybe it'll be a little more accurate here. Okay. So the Edward Greens, and I believe this is also Norwegian Kemp leather, but I can't confirm it. But it's very similar look and very similar to the leather that's also on the churches that I have. <clears throat> okay. So these are definitely in the running for for grab and go if there's a fire. These are definitely my most expensive shoes. Though these were over a thousand dollars years ago. And we'll talk about that too, by the way. We'll talk about this website that was recommended where you can get these on discount. We're going to talk about that. Talk about acquiring things like this. So those are in the running as well. <clears throat> and then of course my black Oxford, uh, my black uh, wingtip uh, churches would definitely be in the running. Well, let me grab them. Uh, this has to be fair. Has to be fair. <coughs> oh, 
Okay. <clears throat> and the lovely Bree is in the house. Okay. And so the, the, the church's wingtips, these are actually ranch oxhide is the term that churches uses, but I think it might be Norwegian kinth leather. It might very well be. Hard to tell. But these are a possibility, too, to grab and go. If, if the place was on fire and I could only grab one pair of shoes, what pair of shoes should I grab? Okay, so the lovely Bree is in the house. <clears throat> okay, does anybody have um, any input on what pair they would grab of those ones I just showed. We don't have that many watching right now, but maybe we can get some input. Kyle's in the house. He's all over the place. And uh, Cheat Town, is anyone else here besides me a fan of, of Hi-Fi audio? That's a good question. That's a good question. Craig, your Norwegian is not bad at all. Uh, let's see here. Um, you are a fan of everything. Um, let's see, Carlos, I can't deny that. <laughs> Happy Father's Day, Craig and everyone. Leslie's in the house. Leslie's in the house. Uh, okay, and let's see here. Uh, hi, everyone, says the lovely Bree. Happy Father's Day to all, f all the fathers. And Kevin's in the house. He says morning. Craig, uh, a man of mystery. He has three watches, but so many <laughs> shoes. Uh, well, I mean... Unlike watches, shoes, you really should have a rotation. We did talk about this. You should not wear the same pair of shoes day after day. That's hard on the shoes. You should have them rest. And, and back in the day when I was dressing in suits every day and when I was selling cars, I had a six-shoe, six-pair rotation. And I think that's what you should maintain is a different pair of shoes every day for, for Monday through Saturday. And then you can start over. Uh, uh, you know, or have something else you wear on Sunday or whatever. Maybe you could have a seven-day rotation. That would work, too. Uh, <clears throat> let's, let's see. Craig, give your father, father the 005 Kevin in the house. Good suggestion. <clears throat> Maybe when I go down and visit him, I, I'm probably going to go down and visit him for his birthday. And maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll take the 005 down. For he's got a big wrist. He might need extra uh, links. Okay. So, I'm getting no feedback on which of those shoes you guys would pick. Anybody have any feedback at all what you would grab and go with? And, and if you do put, put an opinion in there, then, uh, then say why. Say why you would pick that particular one. And if anybody needs to see them again, I'll tell you what, I'm going to run through them again. Oh, Dan's calling. <laughs> Hey, hey, Dan, we're live on the air. What'd you have to say? I was going to tell you to tell your old man Happy Father's Day. Oh, I already talked to him earlier this morning. Okay. Yeah. I was just thinking about him. I know he's Mormon. Yeah. So probably a lot of people are wishing him Happy Father's Day. That's right. So That's, he he, he has a lot of, lot of little ones running around. He, he, he created a lot of trouble. In his time, he's loved by a lot more than people than we are. He sure. he created a lot of trouble. All right, carry on, carry on. Right, Bye. Okay, let's see here. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, does he still wear the snowflake you gave him? Kyle's asking the question. Uh, yes, he does. Absolutely. And Carlos is in the house. If I had to leave in an emergency, leave in an emergency, the black boots. Okay. All right. There we go. The 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 limer hiking boots or limer. I don't know how you pronounce that. Okay. So we got to vote for the boots. I would grab and go the limer. Lima. Okay. So we got the boots again for Kevin. And Kyle agrees with Carlos. Or Norwegian, of course, they are so nice. Okay. Um, all right, very interesting, very interesting. Let's run through them again. One more time for those that didn't see. We've got uh, the churches, 
wingtips from circa about 1982, I want to say. Okay. Craig, do you have siblings? Yes, I have three sisters. Well, two are still alive. I had three. One has passed, unfortunately. Okay, so there's one. The Edward Green. Edward Green's with the day-night soul. Okay. The Edward Green stunners. The Russell. Russell Moccasin Company. Traveling chucker or whatever you want to call this. It's a moccasin construction. The Timberlands, extremely rare. Norwegian Kempf leather, extremely rare. Okay. Peter Limmer and Sons, or Limer and Sons, however you pronounce it. The custom made boots that already have multiple votes. Extremely hard to get, very long waiting list. Okay, see it has six rows of stitches here. That's it, that's the only seam. There's no seam in the back, see that? No seam anywhere else. There's that one seam right here with six rows of stitches, that's it. That's the only seam, very waterproof. Okay. All right, and uh, let's see. Did a subscriber did a subscriber buy your day date? No, no, Kyle. Um, okay. Um, all right. So let's see if there's any other feedback on those those finalists. Those finalists. Oh, by the way, I can, we can throw in boots. We can throw in my Lucchese's in the running. Let's pull them up here real quick. I don't have them. I could go get them, but you've seen them before. Um, so, okay. So we've got two possibilities on the Lucchese's. We've got the um, ostrich, the ostrich stunners, okay? The ostrich stunners, these are both custom made. All right, and then we've got uh, these crocs, crocodile, crocodile Lucchese's, okay? So we'll throw them in as an honorable mention possibilities to grab and go, both custom made, okay? <clears throat> so there we go. Okay, so let's see what else we got in here. Uh, beautiful boots, says Kevin. D, okay, I guess you're talking about the lemmers. And, and Mr. Q says HFD. Now, what is HFD? HFD. I'm, I'm not hip on that. What is HFD? <clears throat> I'm not sure what HFD is. Uh, maybe he will clarify. Okay, so any other nomina nominations? Anybody else um, have uh, have fun, dudes? Okay, so put any other comments in about these choices, and then I'm going to give you a little bit of time to do that, and then I'm going to tell you which ones I would grab and go, and I'm going to tell you why. <clears throat> oh, Happy Father's Day, Megan says. HFD is Happy Father's Day. Okay, I'm not a, I'm not hip to all, all your. Um, all the uh, abbreviations. So there you go. <clears throat> Megan, what are you doing for your dad today? Do tell. Do tell. Did you get him something nice, something special? And uh, let's see. Thanks, Carlos, for the Bitcoin. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> and um, that's one thing about the lovely Brianna. She's always appreciative of people that, that help her in her cause. And one of her causes is to try to stack as much Bitcoin as possible. Uh, Bri, you're very welcome, says Carlos. Okay, time to shave with my timeless razor. There you go. Now, do you remind me, you have the aluminum one? I think you'll grab the mocks. 
Okay, so the Russell Moccasins. Okay, <clears throat> says Mike. All right. All right, we'll wait and see if we get any other, any other comments, and then I will tell you what my, what my pick would be. And it's a very difficult decision. And I'll tell you my decision-making process. And then we'll talk a little bit about acquisition of some of these things. Let's see. Uh, it's okay. People tell me I'm on hip frequently. Uh, at a tree has the white gold one. Okay. Uh, the ostrich are so nice, but I shall stick my head into the sand. Or Carlos said that and the aluminum one. Okay. Um, now, Triforce Rich, tell me, is the aluminum one aggressive enough for you? <clears throat> what blade gap did you get? I don't know if they have different blade gaps. I don't like the wide aggressive blade ga gaps on mine because I shave every day, so I don't really need the wider gap. And and for me, I get a great shave with the with the narrower gap. So so there's that. Okay, so we're not getting. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. I do one more time check here, and I'm going to show you which one I would grab and go and why. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Uh, let's see, my dad across the U.S., I got to Oregon a couple days ago in my van, but I called him and my brother. Okay. Okay. All right. Drum roll. And it is, yes, the hiking boots, the limer or limer, however you pronounce it, custom-made hiking boots, which I bought in... I want to say the late 80s, the late 80s, okay, and maybe, maybe 86, 87, I don't remember the exact year, but these are amazing. I gave up on them for like 20 years. I tried to break them in, and they were just so stiff, and I just, I gave up on it. I said, this just isn't going to work. And then I, I gave up on them for 20 years, literally. And then I decided, I read up on them a lot more, and I decided, hey, I'm going to go through the break-in procedure that they recommend. I'm going to wear them for like 10 minutes a day, like every day. And then slowly but surely, I'm going to start wearing them a little longer. And I went through this process for like three or four months. I broke them in. And now they are amazingly comfortable, just amazingly comfortable. And the reason that I would grab these and go is because it would take a long time to replace them. There's a very long waiting list if they even still make the customs anymore. I think they do, but you have to contact them and go through a lot of rigmarole, and there's a long, long wait. So the all the other shoes would be easier to replace than these. Not the Timberlands, though. Those would be impossible to replace, those vintage Timberlands. But I, if I have to make a judgment, I would go with the, the these limers because they're super, super well-made, super comfortable. There's a lot of hiking that I can do around here, and I can re replace most of the other shoes a lot easier than I could replace these. So that's my logic. That's why I would grab these and go. So there you go. There you go. Um, so Carlos was right again. Carlos was right again. Williams watches in the house. Craig talks shaving, but it could be more aggressive. Um, it hasn't cut me once, but it takes a few strokes to remove all the hair. Aluminum only comes in one model, and that's the less aggressive. Yeah, do you do two passes? I do two passes, so that way I don't even try to get everything on the first pass, and then I rinse, and then I relather again, and then I go for a second pass, and it just works great. I shaved today with my non-special cartridge Gillette. Today was my third day without shaving, and I was starting to feel really uncomfortable. Yeah, I can't go without shaving. I don't. I get it. It's it starts itching and. No, I, I can't do that whole non-shaving thing. That 
that hipster thing, cause in the house. If we had a highlight reel from the quarantine streams, Carlos throwing the watch and phone in the pool, maybe number one. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that uh, remembers me and to send, LOL, that rem, rem, I think it means reminds me to send a mail to Craig. Okay, so you got something to email? Good. Uh, Kyle's in the house. Does Steve own a Bernese, Bernese Mountain Dog? I feel that would be fitting. That's a good question for him. He's going to be live, I think, on Wednesday. He's planning on doing a live show. So do chime in and ask him. He's got some, some very interesting animals. He does. Uh, let's see here. Carlos, hipsters do not shave but once in a week, so you are not, <laughs> you are getting there. And let's see. Um, okay, so let's talk about acquiring these things. Um, one of the viewers mentioned that on the uh, Edward Greens that you can go to this website, Mr. Porter, and you can get 50% off on the Edward Greens, right? Okay, so see, let's do a search here. And, uh, okay, and so what we're going to do, we're going to look here. First of all, I wouldn't wear any of these things. I don't know what people buy these for. That's a little bit silly. Uh, and pay $655 for them? Are you kidding me? I would buy moccasins from from uh, Russell Moccasin Company and be done with it. So I'd pass on all those. Okay, and we looked at these boots the other day. These boots that are unreal. Those are $1,800. And they don't look like they're on sale. Uh, here's... Uh, some of their other nice that that cap toe looks very nice, twelve eighty five. That looks very nice, fifteen hundred thirty five. So far, not on sale. Let's keep going here. Uh, okay, here's one pair that are like suede or whatever that are on sale. I wouldn't even want those. Uh, let's keep going. There's another pair that that I wouldn't want that's on sale. Um, now here's a pair of boots. These are super nice. These I would definitely I would definitely go for. These are on sale. Those are half price. They're $1,935. They're $968. Now, but watch what happens when we go to these. Watch this. Watch this. No, oh, for crying out loud, all these pop-ups. I want to take your damn survey. Okay. All right. Watch this. Sold out, sold out, only one left, 8.5. Sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out. <laughs> My size would be 10.5, I believe. They're all sold out, pretty much. And that one, low stock, one left, 12.5. So, I mean, yeah, it's a good price, but it's like the butcher that has the meat on a good deal, and then they're not available. They're sold out. So sometimes these things are trickier to do than you might think. They, you know, these, these websites that say 50% off and all that, and then you look, and half the time the ones that they've got uh, for sale are ones you wouldn't even want to own. So that, that's a problem. Do you got kids? Not that I know about. There might be some running around in various parts of the world, that, but I'm not aware of them. Uh, let's see here. Uh, my dad's got me some gift cards. There you go. Someone asked about shoe trees the other day. Just sent an email with links to a video on my Allen Edmonds shoe trees as well as a link to Allen Edmonds website. Yeah, I'm sure those are good, going to be good uh, shoe trees. Um, <clears throat> I just don't like to recommend something unless I have personal experience with it. Okay, so first of all, let's do the shoe trees. Peter Parker sent this. We will take a look. Well, first of all, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up the uh, the website. Da, 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 da. Okay, 
Yeah, I like that. I like that style. I like this where you can grip them easily and pull them out. I like that. I've got several that are kind of that style. Okay, so um, $24 a piece, that, that is a little bit pricey. And I'm not so sure about the the overall shape here. Uh, I did find some on uh, Amazon. Let me go there real quick. Uh, I looked after that question came up, and I did find some. And I stashed them in my cart so that it would be easy to pull them up. And let me pull these up here. Dun, 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 dun. These um, looked pretty good. These are similar to the ones that you just showed. And these are $40 for two. So a little bit better price and look very similar. And you can order them in different size ranges. And they, you know, they have left and right. They're different for left and right. Some of the cheaper shoe trees are like they're just round in the front and they, they'll go into either shoe. They're not designed to be in the left or right foot, which is kind of not, not good. So there are a lot of options out there. I just don't like to recommend one that I don't have personal experience with. But I'm sure the Allen Edmonds ones are fine. Uh, let me see if I can pull this video up. <clears throat> These are, these are the Allen Edmonds Cedar Toe go. Shoe Tree. I bought these for $24. And I'll skip a little bit forward here. USA with an S. These are size small. So on the box, okay. there's a reproduction um, of the uh, hmm. sizing chart. Okay, so they have the size ranges on there. On Edmund's website to select. Let's go back a little bit. They are marked USA with an S. These are appears to be a left and a right. They don't look like they have a lot of shape to them, like the foot shape in the front. But the other ones don't have a ton of that either. So th my, I guess my, my real advice is look around and see what you can find and then buy one set and then make sure that they're really what you like before you buy others. I've got a whole bunch of different ones that were purchased at different times with different shoes. And most of the time when I bought a nice pair of shoes, I got a pair of shoe trees with them so that I knew that they would fit and and they'd be high quality and and but in some cases no in some cases they're ones that I picked up wherever and I've got probably I don't know a dozen sets of shoe trees I don't keep shoe trees in all my shoes I keep them in all the shoes that you've seen today and all my dress shoes I keep them in all those I don't keep them in like my boat shoes for example and it's really you don't need to in those um, so I, I don't and I, I do keep them in my, I have special ones for the boots, for the Lucchese boots that are designed for boots. So, yeah, that's a thing. That's a whole thing. Um, let's see. Uh, hey, Craig, was browsing around eBay and came across this day date with a misaligned date wheel. Sent you a picture. Okay, we'll take a look at that. We'll take a look at that. Okay, well, first we're going to show uh, Carlos's picture that he sent. And there it is. There's the Doxa in the pool. In the pool. Beautiful pool. I like that pool. But there's the Doxa in the pool. There you go, folks. Only live on this channel. That's where you see that sort of thing. Okay, and let's look at the funny date wheel. Hmm. That's interesting. That's interesting. That's that's unusual. That's unusual. 
Uh, now, maybe maybe it was still in the process of changing or something. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, I would if I was thinking about buying that, I'd certainly look into that and see what the issue is there. <clears throat> so that's definitely a thing. Uh, looter lives matter. I, I assume cedar should be great wood for that. It should bring aroma. There you go. Well, and the main reason that you use cedar shoe trees is uh, to help absorb the sweat and the moisture. And in addition to it, keeps the, the shape of the shoe. Some shoe trees are not made of cedar. And some of them are actually shellacked so that they won't absorb the moisture. So there are different kinds of shoe trees. But I prefer the ones that are cedar that will help absorb the, uh, the moisture. So there you go. Um, uh, let's see, Carlos. It's a bewildered world. A man can so easily forget to shave, except for Craig. He's always on top of things. Uh, Lamont, Skype Craig, and show us. Skype in and show us your new watch, okay? Uh, your man of morals. Uh, okay, I'm taking him dinner. Okay. Can you read the time? Uh, on what? On that day date? Well, you know, it's interesting. Look at some of the hash marks look like that you can hardly see them in this picture. Like the 5, 10. That's interesting. It might just be the lighting. Very strange. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, you meant in the pool. Oh, could I read the time in the pool? All right, let's take another look at that. Let's take another look at that and see if we can read the time. We will, and as a matter of fact, I will zoom in a little bit. And I don't think I can read the time. I don't think I can read the time. Maybe some of you guys with better eyes can read the time, but I don't think I can read the time there. Okay. Um... We really need to see that watch the month, but I don't think Durr is here and he wanted to see it so bad. Okay, cool picture, Carlos. Should submit it to ID guy. A nice shave. Uh, went once with the grain and once across. Went against for a couple of spots that are harder. Yeah, I don't do any of that against the grain stuff. I just shave down like this both times. I'm not going to tempt fate by going quote against the grain I get a good enough shave just going normal and doing it twice I get a plenty plenty close enough shave uh, let's see here um, Craig how do you feel about the all gold date just 116238 I see so many with the day date but barely any solid gold date chest but both stunners well we talked about the date chest the other day uh, that Brett was looking at and I think it's a stunner I, I like I like the the all gold jubilee bracelet I, I think it'd be fine I don't know if those have solid center links or not uh, nobody I asked that question and nobody uh, answered it so I don't know I it can maybe somebody can chime in if the six digit uh, a Jubilee bracelet has solid center links because that would be a plus for wear and tear because uh, some of the Jubilees do tend to have wear and tear issues even more so than the Date 8, the President bracelet sometimes. So that could possibly be an issue, but I like it. I think it's a cool looking watch. We may need to zoom in on that. Okay. Uh, Carlos, I was able to read the time when I took the photo. Yeah, it's easier. Exactly. It's easier when you're doing that, yes. Um, the resolution of the photo isn't going to be super great. It's just an iPhone photo, for gosh sakes. Um, Kyle's in the house. He says, Scott, we have looked at it recently on the channel. The All Gold Datejust is really cool. The guy selling that watch won't get back to us now. Maybe he was put off by the lowballing. Oh, well, he can keep it for a while. Let him sweat. Let him sweat. Okay, so let's go back to, and by the way, this is the Limer boot 
website. It's very like 80s, right? I mean, I don't think he's updated the website since the 80s. Um, and let's see if I click on purchase info. Let's see what this does. Okay, Limer. Beginning April 1, 2007, Limer Boot became the exclusive mail order source for all the Limer brand of production footwear and accessories. The staff at Limer Boot Inc. is very well qualified to serve our customers' needs with over 35 years of in-store mail order fitting experience. It's our goal to serve our customers with absolutely the highest quality products and customer service possible. We at Limer Boot uh, invite your inquiries. Okay, blah, blah, blah. So I guess you've just got to uh, contact them. And they don't, when I click on boots and accessories here, they only talk about what they call the standard boot um, and the size it's available in. They don't talk about the customs. So my guess is you need to talk to them. See, they have all different different uh, options here, right? Uh, if, my guess is you have to talk to them for the customs. They used to have a separate website for it. Uh, who are we? Uh, let's see here. So there's the mail information. Hmm. Very limited information. <laughs> Uh, fitting okay talks about break in okay all right well okay so that's that's uh, lemmer boots and then let's go back here to um Edward Green. Okay, so this is the Edward Green website. Okay. And let's look at the classics. Let's look at the classics. That Dover looks good. That looks pretty cool. Oh, come off it with the damn pop-up crap. Um, I will never put those on my website, I can tell you that. Boots are cool. Uh, let's see here. Any, a cap toe is always nice. Any kind of a cap toe is always nice. Those are nice. This is a, a, a more formal cap toe. That's very, very nice. A pair of those in black would be a very versatile. Boots are nice. Um, hmm. Where is the country? Um, uh, let's see. What's this? Well, we looked at the classics. Store style. Oxfords. looking for some wingtips. Well, anyway, I can't find it. I can't. These websites are, most of them are garbage. Most of them are garbage. Okay. Um, Craig, do you have any experience with platinum watches? No, I don't. No, I don't. I, I know they're heavy. It's very, it's a very durable item, but I would have no interest in, in buying a platinum watch because if I'm going to spend that kind of money, I'm going to get 18 karat yellow gold is what I'm going to do. Absolutely. So I certainly wouldn't pay extra money for something that looks like steel and is heavy and uncomfortable to wear. Uh, what's the difference between the standard and custom boots? <clears throat> the customs are made to measure to fit your feet. And you have to provide them with all the information. They send you like a thing to stand on and trace your foot and different measurements you need to take. That's how I did mine. I didn't go there. You can also go there. 
uh, but they send you a kit and you have to do all the measurements and then you send that to them and then it takes a long time it was like at least a six month wait when I got mine I don't remember the t uh, maybe it was eight months but it, it, it's a long wait and then they call you when the boots are ready and and what was funny was they didn't even have me pay until the boots were ready I could have just said oh, no thanks I don't want them now it was weird I mean now they might require a deposit I don't know but back in the day they didn't um, they called me they were ready I paid and they shipped them <clears throat> So it's pretty wild. <coughs> At least I don't remember sending him any kind of a deposit. Uh, and Leslie says, I watched Silence of the Lamb for the first time last night. Great movie. Whoa, yeah. Scary one. <clears throat> scary movie. <clears throat> Speaking of scary, Trashy Larry was timed out. Uh, let's see. Um... I really like the F.P. Jorn uh, Havana in Platinum. Okay. And uh, let's see. Mike says, uh, uh, at William, hi to at Williams Watches. There you go. All right. Let me think what else I was going to show. Um, oh, oh, the other thing is with the high-end shoes, you can definitely get you can definitely get sometimes some interesting shoes on eBay and we looked at this the other day these are the ones that I made an offer on I offered them 450 and they turned it down uh, these Crockett and Jones uh, these are Shell Cordovan and I mean that's normally like a, at least an $800 pair of shoes so you know, if you can get something basically brand new, and these are new in the box, uh, for a decent price, that's that's definitely a way to go. And and I mentioned that in the past, I've bought some New Balance and some Sperry's that were new old stock that I uh, got good prices on, and some of those kinds of things are almost impossible to get otherwise like the made in Maine collection Sperry's they're not available in any stores right they're not making them anymore they stopped doing it right so the only way you're going to get a pair of the made in Maine collection shoes is to buy new old stock at this point so I think I showed you guys before the way you save a search on eBay. You do a very specific search of what you want, and then it, they'll show you the search results that match that criteria, and then you click the little thing that says save this search. And then you'll get an email if something is posted that matches that search criteria, and if you're fast enough on the draw, if it's a good deal, you can snatch it right before somebody else does. So that's a good way to snag some specific items that you're looking for that may not be available anywhere else. You know, back when I bought my shoes, like I had to go to the church's store in New York to buy the churches. There, were no, there was nobody in the Washington, D.C. area that sold them. They didn't have any, any stores selling them. So we went to the store in New York, the, the actual church's boutique or whatever, right? And I bought the shoes there. And, you know, there, there was no Internet. There, there was no, you couldn't shop around. You couldn't figure it out. You know, it, it, it was difficult. And I think that, and prices were high. And sometimes you'd get something on sale, but the high-end stuff, it, it wasn't that easy. It wasn't, there, there weren't all these competitive marketplaces like there are now. You wouldn't find anybody selling some of these shoes at discount. Uh, now, sometimes you had these discount malls where you'd have some Ralph Lauren stuff or whatever, but usually it wasn't the high-end stuff. And, and so now with the Internet, you guys have a lot of advantages that we didn't have back in the day. There are also disadvantages in that there's a lot of crap for sale. You've got to be very selective and very careful. But uh, if you do that, you can get some real deals on some stuff. So there you go. Um <clears throat> 
Craig, you were wearing a linen shirt the other day. Any companies to recommend? Yes, that was um, Kenneth Gordon. That was a Kenneth Gordon shirt. Uh, go to my... Uh, you should be able to go to my Flickr and find the photo set where I have all those clothes in a photo set. If you search like Kenneth Gordon, for example, you'll probably find that... that and, and I don't know, I think you guys can do these searches. I think you can search my photos. I, I, I don't know, you know, if, the, if it works. Uh, but, you know, if you, if you find the photo, uh, Kenneth, okay, let's see here. All right, so there's there's a lovely Brianna wearing a Kenneth Gordon shirt. Okay, she looks pretty pretty hot in a Kenneth Gordon shirt. But here we go. So see, that that's in my Flickr. Is um, that's the particular shirt that I was wearing. That's a Kenneth Gordon heirloom collection, and that's linen, and that's made in the USA. So. Um, yeah, and you could probably find those in mint condition on eBay if you did a saved search and waited for somebody to list one for sale that was in mint condition, right? You wouldn't want to buy one with any wear on it. But if it was in mint condition and you could snag it, you know, for 10 or 15 bucks, why not? Why not? You're getting a shirt that's well over $100 new, probably 200 new. Uh, for 15 bucks. Why not do that? Uh, let's see. Um, <clears throat> Craig, have you ever bought a high quality item on eBay with subpar packaging? Well, the, uh, the uh, shoes that I mentioned that I bought, new old stock, those came in the boxes. They had the boxes and everything. I mean, so... No, most everything that I've bought, I haven't bought a ton of stuff on eBay. I don't really need anything. I've got a lot of stuff already, but um, most things that I have bought, I've had good uh, experiences with. Obviously, you try to buy from somebody that has really good ratings and all that. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's a, it's a doable thing. We bought a couple of pairs of... Um, made in Maine boat shoes for Brianna and we bought her hiking boots we bought them on eBay and those were really nice condition and uh, good buy and uh, very very good results so so there you go um, and those are made in USA you can't you can't buy them anymore you can't go into the store and buy them they don't have them so sometimes you you have to uh, you have to go vintage and, and try to find new old stock is, is, is a good move, especially on shoes. I, I'm not a big fan of buying used shoes. Um, I'd rather find new old stock because, uh, they, you know, they form to your feet as you, you break them in and all. You break them into your feet, so you don't want one where somebody else broke it in. Um, to any extent, you know. If somebody wore it just a few times, that's fine. That's no big deal. But, you know, if it was totally broken into somebody else's foot, that's probably not not a good deal, uh, not a good way to go. Um, uh, let's see. I can imagine the Platinum 40 day date is very heavy on the wrist. I've never tried one, only the day date 36 in gold I have yeah that's the way to go you're better off with the day date 36 in gold absolutely uh, let's see Tom's in the house he says hi Craig and all and zombie beer so says Craig most watch people will know that you're wearing a platinum watch especially easy to tell with Rolex and other platinum specific dial configurations well but I mean I don't really care what watch people know. I mean, I, I I buy my watches just to wear and enjoy, and 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 if I'm if I'm making a power statement, right? If I'm if I'm trying to intimidate or whatever in some kind of a business deal, I certainly want uh, 18 karat yellow gold. That's certainly what I want. 
because I want it to also match all the other accessories that I have, like my gold pen, gold cufflinks, gold. I want it to all be gold, all 18 karat yellow gold. There's no reason to go with platinum or white gold. There's no no logical reason to uh, to do that. Um, Cousin House, can you rank all of the GS that you've owned from best to worst? Well, the 002 <laughs> is not even a close call the 002 and I didn't focus this properly let me focus it here give me a second there we go all right and uh, that will zoom back out there we go the 002 the 002 by a mile <laughs> I mean it's just super comfortable on wrist it's gorgeous it, it just it's just amazing uh, so the 002 by a land sh landslide number two is the 231 uh, stunner on the left and then and then probably the 005 right there just that in that order the 002 the 231 and then the 005 because I sold the the snowflake for a reason it just it just wasn't a good size for me it was too big to be an all-arounder and it was not really a sport watch so it's kind of like a no man's land. Uh, so yeah, so there you go. Um, Tom's hanging out. I think the ice blue dial is only platinum. That's correct. The platinum one has a correct has a has a unique dial on the day date. Absolutely, and that is a telltale sign that it's platinum. And also, it has they usually have the smooth bezel, right? It's not a fluted bezel. It's a smooth bezel on the platinum. Uh, let's see. It's actually 5:55 a.m. here. There you go. Um, and he's in Hong Kong. Uh, do you have to wear masks? Okay, we're getting a report from Hong Kong. That's good. We're getting a live report. Yeah, it's pretty normal to wear masks. We dealt with the virus efficiently. There you go. I went I went to a sushi restaurant and wasn't allowed to dine because I didn't have a mask even though once you sit down you're allowed to take it off to eat. Well, I would hope you can take it off to eat. <laughs> oh boy. Hey, these silly restrictions. It's absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Oh boy. Don't get me started on this total scam. This total scam. We've been we've been bamboozled. Kyle's in the house. Yeah, I figured people would. Asians were wearing them before this anyway. There you go. Um not sure what else uh what else we can cover here. Well, we've been going an hour anyway. We've been going an hour. Uh, so, and like I say, Wednesday, you can look forward to hopefully uh, the Stevester will be live. And and maybe we'll be getting a report at some point from Kyle from the, from the West Coast, from somewhere interesting. And Kyle says, makes zero sense. That's correct. Uh, Asians have been wearing them since at least SARS epidemic. Yep. Well, they also have a lot of air pollution problems and other issues over there, so they might be wearing them for for a number of reasons. Uh, I, I I wouldn't go there. I, I wouldn't wear them. I mean, it's just absolutely insane. I mean, you can't hardly breathe through the damn things. That cannot be good. It cannot be good for you to be expelling, breathing out, and then breathing back in your exhaust. I mean. That you're recycling your exhaust that that cannot be a good thing uh so there you go um let's see tom austin i i i never knew asians wore masks before all this oh yeah they, a lot of them have worn them and leslie says we've been hoodwinked <laughs> got that right uh through their opening. I got a massage today for the first time in a long time. There you go. Absolutely. Let's see, uh, not all, but some do. Okay. 
All right. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up. Masks are also a common courtesy to not get other people sick as the Japanese wear them regularly. Yeah, I think that's a little bit ridiculous. Um, if you're sick, you just shouldn't be out and about. You know, you should be at home if you're sick. Uh, I think it's pretty rude for people to be sick and be, be go out and spreading that around. So they, they should stay home and get better and then and then go out. So that's the way I look at it. Uh, let's see. Um, you know, they backed down on the whole... They said that the thing would spread even if you didn't have symptoms, asymptomatic, you know, spread. They backed down on that and said, oh, it turns out that doesn't really happen. Uh, they, they just basically lied to us at every turn. Uh, let's see. Um, here the situation of the virus is getting worse. If I'm able to fight to Spain, I might remain there if the situation there is better. What do you mean by it's getting worse? Are more people dying from it, or is the crackdown, the lockdown, worse? Uh, Blue says, wrap this puppy up. Nice show. Absolutely, we're going to. Craig, we can't end yet. Derek says, no. When are you uh, finally immigrating to America, Carlos? Uh, Tom, uh, interesting. Thanks, mate. Okay. Derek says, we haven't really covered Rolex yet. Or the day date. We talked about day dates earlier. Yes, we did. You weren't you weren't paying attention. You got to go back, rewind, and and watch again. Derek, are you uh, you are missing to ask Craig about the day date? Tom's in the house. Uh, should have asked early. <laughs> All right, let's check on the time, and we're gonna wrap this puppy. I am getting hungry. I am starting to get hungry. We covered a lot of territory today. A lot of hard work. Oh, I didn't give Bree a, a plug. She was in the chat earlier. I should give the lovely Brianna a plug. The lovely Brianna, definitely, definitely, definitely go and subscribe to her channel. Go subscribe to the lovely Bree's channel. And if you're really generous, then go ahead and sign up as a Patreon and help support her creating content. What's for dinner? Pretty much the usual. Sweet potatoes, some chicken, some avocado, uh, what else? Some black beans, uh, some uh, hemp seeds on top, same old, same old. Thanks for, sub thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing and all that good stuff. And if you haven't already done it, click the bell. Craig, I'm pretty sure Bear Clooney is your legitimate love child from Russia. There you go. Uh, permanently I will never do but well might be passing two to five months per year over there there you go absolutely come on and hang out Carlos we will see you when you do thanks for tuning in everybody <laughs>